Yo yo, today we're going to be making these changing hieroglyph hieroglyph hieroglyphics. It's using displacement particle emitters and a smoke sim too. These are all just generated off mid journey. They're a bunch of hieroglyphics. I went into Photoshop and just blurred them out a bit just so the displacement isn't as sharp. So here's a kind of a rundown of how you can switch in between the materials. So I also have just a marble texture from Quixel. I'll just put that off to the side. That's what the stone texture is going to come from and how you're actually going to switch between these hieroglyphics is with mix nodes. So you can generate these images off mid journey, just type in black and white hieroglyphic. You might need to go into Photoshop and just adjust the blur a bit, give them some blur just so it's not super sharp on the displacement and just import them all. The easiest way to do this would just be with two or four images. You're going to plug them into mix nodes. So I have two up here. So this top one is a face and this bottom one here is a triangle. So this is the first group. So I'll just group it to make it a bit easier to understand. And then for the second group down here, this top image is a square and then the bottom image is a bird. So we have four different images and they're all in mix nodes. And then I also have a color ramp and a gradient texture. Also just a noise texture and a color ramp that's giving a bit of noise while it's passing. So I'll show you here. So while that color ramp goes, there's a bit of noise that's controlling it. So I have this X value two, and that's what's pushing this gradient texture up. It's pretty simple stuff. The animating is where it gets a little bit tricky. So this color ramp is gonna control this mix. So this mix is using both of these groups. So it's gonna change from this one to this one, but there's two images in each one. So you're gonna want another mix in each group that's changing between those. So you're only gonna do one, one group at a time. So we're gonna start off in group one. So this noise texture black will be group one, and then the white will be this group two. So you can see from the start, it's on black. So if we look at it from this mix value, It'll show that head, which is this image. And then once this value that I have, that's controlling the X value, so it's pushing this gradient texture up and you can see it switches over from this group over to this one. So while that's switching over, now it's showing this group, it's showing this image. We're gonna switch these two images. So when it switches back, instead of showing this top image, it's showing this bottom image. So now while that's showing this group, I'm gonna switch this because you won't be able to see this. It's showing this group. So we'll switch this mix value. So you can see if I show you from this first group, it switches from the face over to the triangle. And since this color ramp is only showing this, you don't see that. So now when the color ramp goes back, it'll show that triangle. And then you do the same for this. So while that switches back to this group, you change these two images and then now when you animate the gradient texture to come back once more it shows the bird because you switch these two so it's just kind of switching these while the other one is showing moving the gradient texture up and down pretty much and after that you can just use this black and white image in a height for a displacement map plug it in the displacement and you can see if this plane is subdivided enough using subdivisions and geometry subdivision it'll make a little bit of a gap there. So the reason why it's glowing in the back there is because I have a plane that has an emission texture. So without it, you can't really see it too much. I'm sure with some lighting, if you had like a top light, you could see it a lot better. With this, I just have an emission. The geometry nodes has subdivisions too. It's five subdivisions, so it's actually a total of nine. But in geometry nodes, it's a bit less realized. So it's not as laggy. That's just the plane for the displacement. And then just made another cube and did the same texture and then meshed them together. And it's pretty seamless, so you can't really tell. For the particle instance, I just used a cube that's kind of uh, displaced weirdly. I have a displace with a Voronoi texture on it and the strength is up pretty high just to give it a little bit of a weird shape. It's parented to the plane, which I have parented to an empty, and then that just has a little bit of a movement to it. So 
it moves with it. I have it animated going from one corner to another and scaling up in the middle. So animate it, set a keyframe down in one corner and you want to change it at the same time that the images are changing. So this is going to look like it's chipping away and there's rocks falling off from the change. Make it go across the whole image like that, scale up and then scale back down to the top corner. You just repeat the same keyframes going backwards and then back again every time it switches. And then I made multiple different protocol systems for it. I'm not sure if you can do this with just one, but I uh, did all the transitions around each of them, around 700 particles. And you just change the start and end time for whenever the image changes. And then each of these little particles are just fractured bits with the same texture as the plane. So you can do the same with smoke too and just use a fluid sim for smoke on the exact same object so it looks like it's kind of kicking up some dust although this is a little bit laggy and just this is the one thing that makes the scene lag a lot but it does look pretty cool so that's the tutorial let me know if you guys have any questions and i'll try and answer them and i'll see you guys in the next video